Hey, welcome back to Bill Plays Bass, where I play these things. Uh, today, I'm going to try to fix a truss rod that's maxed out with a bass that moves action that's still horrendous. Let me show you a picture here of what it looked like uh, before I adjusted the truss rod. Yeah. And then now, uh, this is after. So the truss rod is really, really getting tight. And let me find a good angle. Uh, it's kind of hard to find the best angle, but it's, it's really, really bad. There you go. That's a pretty, pretty good one right there. It's still horrendous. I can probably stick two quarters under there, no questions asked. So what do you do? You know, what do you do if your truss rod uh, gets too tight before, you know, it's finished on the job? Well, some uh, professionals uh, have a way to do things, and even some backyards people, to uh, basically induce some back bow into the neck. When the truss rod is uh, too tight and it's still not doing its job, you have uh, a lot of uh, bow in it. So the action, uh, in theory, is better in the middle of the neck, and then, or actually really bad in the middle of the neck, better at the top here and, and the first frets. So let me show you my collage au crap to uh, try to solve this problem. So first we have uh, what effectively is a giant crowbar or pry bar. It's going to help us put leverage on the neck. We've got uh, these two little guys. These are just pieces of wood with a couple dowels glued to them. The idea is is that they will go above a fret, and the dowel will let it, the strings go through, especially since it's uh, bass strings. And I got a bigger one for further up the board, uh, you know, closer here, and I've got a smaller one for back here. We're gonna space them <clears throat> roughly uh, something like this. So that's gonna allow us to have uh, the area of the neck is going to have a, a fulcrum point that this is going to sit on. And let me show you what's going to happen here. So uh, underneath, we're going to use this call, C-A-U-L, to hold the neck. But it's also, uh, this one's meant to be on a jig. It's got a, a, a way to be uh, fastened to it. However, we're just going to clamp this bad boy to the bottom of the neck. And we are going to uh, basically use this whole contraption to induce back bow into the neck, tighten the truss rod down, and then put the strings back out of tension. And then with any luck, maybe just loosen the truss rod a little bit. So I have never done this before. Uh, I just watched kind of a, a backwoods guy, Randy, somebody or other. Um, Sorry, I don't remember your name, Randy, but also uh, Dan Orwine. So if you don't know, Dan Orwine is, uh, I'd have to say, the senior luthier over at uh, Stuart McDonald slash Stu Mac. You might know him. And, you know, he's worked on famous guitars for people like your Willie Nelson's Trigger, that sort of thing. So uh, when he has an idea, even if it seems backyard, I trust it. Uh, we'll see how far that goes. <laughs> So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the uh, strings here quite a bit. All right. There we go. Things are nice and floppy here. The next thing that I'm going to do, I've already got the appropriate truss rod wrench for this bad boy is I'm going to loosen the truss rod. So the strings should be loose enough to where you can pick them up out of their slots and just kind of move them around. Just get out of your way. And of course you want to be sure that you get into the uh, truss rod all the way with the wrench you're using. All right. Feels good. Uh, loosener up here. There we go. Uh, 
as one might imagine, it's pretty tight. There we go. <clears throat> so what I've done is just make sure there's a little bit of pressure uh, on the truss rod, but it's not really all that tight. So uh, it's contraption time. So again, we're going to take the one that's wider of the two. Again, I didn't measure these very well. But what I'm looking for is to put this bad boy around the uh, second fret. We're going to take the other one. What I'm looking for is where the fretboard meets the body, pretty much. Uh, and I'm just arranging these where the... Uh, oh where it's uh, sitting over uh, the fret. So it's spanning uh, two frets versus being on the fretboard. So here comes the fun part, the scary part. This is where it all goes to hell. Okay, so this uh, clamp here needs to come out quite a ways. It's got to get around this entire contraption. Kind of a balancing act here. All right, I'm going to loosen this quite a bit. A lot more than I thought I needed to, sorry. There we go. Hopefully I've given myself some room to uh, adjust with. We can just kind of zip down. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so first thing I'm seeing is uh, I don't have the, uh, I don't have the clamp anywhere near under the call where it needs to be. So fix all that. There we go, I just slide the call under. All right. So we're not very tight yet. Yes. Okay. The call's wanting to move around. So I obviously don't have that centered very well. Told you it's my first time doing this, right? All right. All right, so now I'm going to take a look, see if we're getting any kind of back bow. But it looks like we already are. Uh, <clears throat> there we go. Now if I can use the uh, piece of string as a straight edge. I guess uh, I could use the other strings, but it's like an optical illusion on me. Yeah, so without too much uh, pressure, I've got this in a bit of a back bow. Uh, I thought I would have to put a little more on it than that. 
expecting expecting to have to use a little more oomph expecting it to get you know tight not really that tight I guess a fail would be snap, crackle, pop. I, I'm not going for snap, crackle, pop. Well, that's uh, just a little more to say I did. So <clears throat> there's a little bit of a back bow. So there's a hump in the middle of the board that's raised up. So now the thought is, is we'll go into the truss rod and we'll tighten it. Um, I'm not going to go over, overly tight with it, but we're going to get it on the tighter side of things. Get this string a little more out of my way. Okay. That is maybe a quarter turn, maybe a little less. About another quarter turn. <clears throat> So it's not feeling anywhere near tight yet. All right, we're starting to feel on the tight side. Oh, okay, well, let's see. Still looks like we've got the hump in the middle, as best I can tell. Uh, my advice to you would be to have an actual straight edge, would be very helpful here. So I'm going to take the clamp off. Okay. We'll get these uh, things off. Get a few things out of the way. And let's uh, get this thing up to pitch and see. It says uh, some really thicker gauge strings on it. I'm not a not a fan, and they're old. So when I uh, set this up, it'll have wider gauge strings on it. Will mean the strings will have even less pull on the uh, truss rod. Okay. Well, base doesn't appear to be broken yet. <clears throat> All right. So it's getting her tuned up. I know it's not very exciting. Absolutely necessary.
All right, well, I'm going to be perfectly honest, that uh, hasn't helped much at all. <laughs> so I am going to try to uh, do this again. <clears throat> All right, back for round two. Never give up. Okay, we're going to loosen the uh, truss rod again. All right, so loosen it until it feels loose-ish, and then uh, kind of tighten it back up. So let's get our rig back in action here. Call back underneath again. Got our top piece in place. Okay, we're going to look to see if we can get some, you know, a fair amount of back bow in this. One of the things that I noticed, uh, which I'll put a link to uh, Dan Orwine's video, is that you, know, you had to use uh, some off when he was twisting uh, his uh, his clamp. All right, we're gonna try this again. So I've induced a lot more back bow in there. And then I think the other thing I'm going to do is uh, tighten up the truss rod more.
All right, throttle I want to tighten at the moment. Here is a uh, try number two. <laughs> so. Release our clamp, get it out of the way. Lock arrangement. Without any tension on the strings, or at least any real tension to speak of. Feel like at this point we've already got relief in the neck. It's not, not what we're looking for. Let's uh, get this on the tuner. All right, oh, attempt to. Uh, it's better, but it is not good. So, uh, back to the drawing board. All right, well, after five attempts, including three off camera, I got it. I'm so happy. Uh, I have like five, six, seven bases that just play kind of meh because the truss rod is just too tight. And uh, this method takes care of it. I guess when you do it the right way, I don't know if all bases are the same, but uh, let me demonstrate. You're just gonna hear crappy camera audio, but at least you can get the idea that this play base plays pretty well. <laughs> you have and on your G string you know see if you can bend it up half a step so as long as you can do that the bass will play decent uh, you know this is not perfect it's got really thick strings on it so what I am hoping is that uh, I can put this uh, lovely set of dumb ops I bought to try out set of 4100s pretty light 
uh, and that'll just take care of itself so there won't be so much string bending the neck. But uh, the bass is more than playable. If I preferred to play with a pick, this is exactly where I would put it. I don't, so I like a little more out of my basses. However, wow, so happy. So uh, let me tell you what actually helped. So picture everything that you saw, and there's just a couple of things to tweak. So one of the things from watching the video from Randy, which by the way, uh, check out the description. I'll put the link to both Randy's video and to uh, Stu Mac, uh, Dan Orwine's video. <clears throat> so one of the things that Randy mentioned is that when you had the neck under tension and under back bow, is that the truss rod became easier to turn. So the final attempt that I had off camera, of course, uh, this was the workflow. So I did everything that I'd done before, I guess, except I'd left the truss rod tight from you know, time four or whatever. So I loosened the strings. I got the whole jig together. I put back bow in it. And then I just started tightening down the truss rod. And then I put more back bow in it. And I started tightening down the truss rod. And I put more back bow in it. And I started tightening down the truss rod. Now, what I'll tell you is that no point did I ever feel that I was over tightening the truss rod. At no point did I ever feel like I was putting too much into the neck. So at no point was like, like no, I'm out of used effort, but at no point, I mean, I turned the truss rod harder the first time trying to uh, get, you know, uh, <laughs> like three quarters worth of uh, action out of there. So anyhow, I'm just stoked. Uh, I'm also no longer bewildered. Like I go to my guitar dude who is amazing, who is cheap. Unfortunately, he's about 65, 70 miles away. And uh, I could bring him like anything. He'd go, oh yeah, that truss rod was just real tight. But I'm like, well, he's fine now. And almost never did he turn me down. So I'm assuming, you know, he knows the trick. Uh, there's no reason to think that he wouldn't. You know, he's a guy that can like, build an acoustic guitar himself if he wants to. So yeah, there you go. Uh, I hope this helps you. Uh, please give a like and a thumbs up if it does. Uh, absolutely, please consider subscribing if you're into all things bass. Uh, repair is something I'm trying to get into uh, for my own sake. I have way too many bases uh, having to trek down, you know, 60, 70, 80 miles one way. Uh, it's a bit of a pain. I'll still do it. Uh, so now I can adjust the truss rod uh, that is maxed out. So now what? You know, it's like you got to get stuff just right. Uh, fret work is not something I'm like, you know, comfortable with just yet. Hey, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Uh, it lets me ramble on, but man, I hope this helps you, and uh, I'll see you next time.